Now, um, here's the, the war analogy here or metaphor. And um, when we go to war with AVMs, we have to think of the, uh, the battlefield, which is our anatomy. We have to think of the battle plan, which is our surgical uh, steps. And we have to think of the enemy, the subtype of AVM that we're fighting. And so um, these are those steps that I mentioned. Uh, and I'll just march you through from exposure to resection. Um, exposure, here's that concept of the cube. And the idea here is when you're putting together your exposure, you want a big craniotomy. You want to be able to get to each of these six sides of the cube. And you want as good of a view of those sides as possible. So you want to make sure that you don't scrimp on your exposure. Um, here's um, the next step, subarachnoid dissection. This is really about just kind of opening up the fissures and spaces around the AVM, uh, getting a sense for uh, the arteries and veins. Um, it's really just um, opening things up, looking for the margins, looking for the planes, opening the fissures. And in the process, what you're really doing is you're taking all of that angiographic anatomy that hopefully you've studied in advance, and you're kind of laying it out there so that you can correlate exactly uh, what feature on the angiogram corresponds to what uh, you're seeing in the surgical field. And that really helps kind of place you in space. It's important to find a draining vein because you've got to preserve it. It's got to, the AVM has got to have a drainage outlet throughout the resection, otherwise it'll burst and explode. Um, the color of the vein is important because it, I think of it as a compass. The, the redder it is, the more work you've got to do. And as it starts to turn blue, uh, it tells you um, um, that you're getting close. So that's your odometer. It's telling you how, how far in the journey you are. Uh, the compass is that you, know, you can follow an AVM that may not be obvious on the surface of the brain down to where it's hit, hiding under the surface. And so it can lead you there. Next is the feeding arteries. We've got to figure out what arteries are good and what arteries are bad. So we have to look at um, these different categories of arteries. Some, um, the terminal artery up here, you see comes into the AVM and ends in it. So you can take those. Um, but then you've got these, what we call transit arteries that go uh, right by the AVM. They send off these little branches, but then they continue onward. So you've got to preserve that distal uh, uh, parent artery so that the flow can continue on. There are these perforators that go through the white matter and feed the tip of the cone. And there's also these choroidal vessels in the ventricular space that go uh, and feed the AVM from underneath. So you've got to be able to recognize what's what um, so that as you're working out this puzzle, you don't inadvertently take, for example, this bystander artery that has no uh, contribution to the AVM but is right nearby. Um, and so these are important. Um, it also helps you in your decisions to manage it. This on passage or transit artery is best dissected from distal to proximal because if you start at the back end and work your way forward, then you'll preserve that outflow that you're trying to protect. And this is just a, a picture from a case showing how these arteries that are in transit, they give off these branches. And at the end of your skeletonization, you basically trimmed all of these branches as they feed the aneurysm and you've pr protected that distal flow. So we're all the way down to step number five and we barely touch the AVM. And this is really where the, the battle begins. Um, you've got to first take out these peel feeders, the ones that are right on the surface here. Um, you then go down into the parenchyma and that's where you, you get into the four sides of our cube where the uh, AVM is kind of buried into the parenchyma. Um, as you get into parenchyma, you have to think about eloquence of the brain tissue. So these areas in color are all areas that have really critical speech uh, or language or motor functions, and you've got to protect those. Uh, these are what give eloquence to AVMs in the Spetsner-Martin grading system. You also have to think about the compactness of the AVM. An AVM that's very tight, tightly wound is going to be um, easy to go around, whereas one that's diffuse is going to have this kind of ragged edge that may not be as easy to differentiate. When you get down to the last side of your cube, the sixth side, uh, it's, a, it's what I call the ependymal dissection. It's on the deep side, uh, or you can think of it as the dark side of the moon. You've done everything in the light here, but the part that's in the dark here is the hardest to see. You've got to move the AVM around. 
you've got the deep white matter feeders that you're you're having to to tackle there and so it's really the most challenging part of the case and uh, some of the tricks are to um, use telfa to protect the brain use retractors liberally uh, use these avm microclips for little perforating feeders that don't coagulate and then finally just really deciding exactly where to make that turn and get around the bottom of this if you cut it short you'll have a little remnant here whereas if you go all the way down to the ventricle you'll get around this fully and finally at the end you can see here this avm has been completely circumdissected the vein draining it is is now blue and um, you can just sort of pull it out and it's uh, like a little uh, trophy on a string and uh, and you're done everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.